right. Um, hey, Isaac, move on to the next slide. And I want to introduce um, Bobby Cherian. Um, Bobby is the Senior Vice President of Government Affairs at Hylion. Take it away, Bobby. All right. Thank you, Leslie. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Bobby Cherian. Uh, Anders, I have to thank you because you hit a lot of the key things that we'll be talking about here as well. Our technologies are both linear generators. Uh, we execute a little bit differently, but a lot of the things that Anders had just spoken about are similar to what we'll see with Hylion Technologies as well. So if we go to the next slide, please. We are just coming up to market with our linear generator. So I'm gonna spend a little bit more time talking about who we are, our technology, and, and I won't try and repeat everything Anders had said, but maybe I'll spend a little bit of time talking about some of the differences. So we're Austin, Texas and Cincinnati, Ohio, in terms of the company, we actually acquired this technology from GE. Uh, they had called it Carno. It is a linear generator and the company, uh, you may know us uh, previously um, creating a range extender heavy-duty truck. Uh, we've kind of put a, a pin in that uh, application. We had that actually all the way ready to go, and then we decided to pause and spend all of our efforts now uh, on this Carno generator and bringing this to market. And now we are right around the corner uh, for the first units going out the door. If we go to the next slide, please. Okay. Um, thinking about the linear generator, um, I think we're still having a little bit of trouble, Leslie, with the animation. Is that correct on this one if we click uh, another time here? I could not get the animation to work. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, there you go. It's working. There we go. Oh, hallelujah. Yeah, we'll take that one. So you'll see in the slide, um, we have one moving part in each of these individual cylinders. We actually pair four of them together to get uh, 200 kilowatts of power in our initial launch application. Uh, what we do is very different, though, uh, in terms of generator technology. We are using, again, uh, any fuel that can generate heat. And on the outside ends of the generator is where we actually draw in the fuel-air mixture. We spark that one time, and our goal is only to extract the heat uh, from that uh, uh, reaction. So any of you that know Stirling engines um, or heat engines, that's really all we're trying to do is we're trying to draw the heat out of the ends of the generator. And in yellow there, you'll see a heat exchanger. So the only thing we're doing there is drawing the heat into now the red area that's sitting around the piston. That is actually a trapped volume of helium. So as that helium starts to expand, it shuttles the piston to the right. The exact opposite reaction is happening on the other side of the generator, where again, we're just heating up a, a, a trapped volume of helium. That piston is moving back and forth roughly 20 times per second. So it's really flying by. In the middle, we have uh, very similar, uh, similarly copper coils and wires um, that are just kind of sitting there and then producing the electricity as that shuttles back and forth. Uh, if we go to the next slide, please and click one more time for me. And I'll just hit on some of the benefits of the generator. So we are completely fuel agnostic and I will um, share with you the list of fuels that we've already tested on the next slide. Uh, when I say fuel agnostic, we use not only gaseous, but also liquid fuels as well. And as long as the fuel can produce heat, uh, we can run it through the generator successfully. Ultra low emissions, uh, less than four PPM across the broad spectrum of fuels. Um, that will change somewhat if fuels are contaminated, for example, as we're using um, Permian Basin flare gas, for example, coming out of the oil fields, our PPMs can get into the 11 or so range for NOx, but it's still extremely low even when we have contaminated fuels. Our efficiencies are at 50%, uh, low maintenance, so we only have that single moving part uh, in each of the shafts, so four in our 200 kilowatt uh, assembly. Very quiet as well, less than 67 decibels at seven, seven feet, and we can go from a complete black start um, capability with this uh, system as well. If we go to the next slide. Just quickly, just touching on this one, uh, you'll see the different forms of fuels that we've already tested here, different forms of natural gas, different forms of hydrogen, conventional fuels, and also some alternatives and some really interesting ones like ammonia uh, that can also be used to produce electricity with a generator. If we go to the next slide. 
from an application perspective, uh, we have a lot of options and I'll talk a little bit more in later slides about why, um, but EV charging uh, is gonna be one of our first applications out of the gate this year. Uh, a couple of customers using it in two different types of applications, uh, one in heavy duty trucks, um, one in um, other applications for EVs. Data centers have a very big pull as well. We all know some of the challenges that they're facing today with power. Uh, waste gas is going to be an interesting place for us. We see two applications in this one. I already mentioned that we're doing some work in the Permian Basin uh, using flare gas uh, coming off of oil fields. We'll do similar with landfill gas as well. Uh, prime power is really where the technology shines. So we have uh, various applications around that. And because we have some really unique characteristics around footprint and size, Defense applications also are really interesting for this generator. We actually do have a contract with the Navy to put these power systems uh, into unmanned uh, vessels for the Navy today. If we go to the next slide. So the fascinating part about the generator is that we actually do a lot of the components internally, make all the components internally, I should say, uh, within our facility using additive manufacturing or 3D printing. So you'll see on the left-hand side of the page, that's actually one of the parts that goes into the system. You couldn't do this uh, with traditional manufacturing processes. And this is what allows us to get the really high levels of efficiencies and really disconnecting the reaction of the fuel from the rest of the power system as well by using using really intricate uh, heat exchangers such as this. If you ever have a chance to come out to our facility, you'll see some of these 3D printers that we have uh, in operation. Go to the next slide, please. So I wanted to quickly just share with you, I've got two more slides, this one and one more after it, just what our footprint looks like um, as we think about power here in the future. So we're gonna launch on the left-hand side of the page uh, the 200 kilowatt system, you'll see it's roughly eight and a half feet tall, eight and a half feet wide, two and a half feet in depth. So it's very power dense. When you look at the middle application, the two megawatt solution, uh, this is what we're targeting for uh, data centers and other high power users. You can fit that into roughly a 20 foot shipping container type of space. So it's very power dense. Uh, but the beauty of the system is you can customize the power, package it any way that you need to, um, just by stacking additional power units together. So we can get really creative with how we do this um, for customers in different power uh, sizes. If we go to the next slide just quickly, just a quick view of what the systems will actually look like. Uh, the 200 kilowatt there you see on the left, which is again our launch product, and on the right, the two megawatt solution, again, fitting roughly in a, a 20 foot shipping container. That is my last slide. Uh, I wanted to just give you a quick intro to the company and what we're doing and I appreciate all of your time. Thank you.